نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعلی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا پی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم الہمنا رشدا و عائزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہو سورة النساء ورس ایٹی سیون اللہ لا الہ الا ہو اللہ there is no deity except him he will surely assemble you for account on the day of resurrection about which there is no doubt and who is more truthful than Allah in statement In this verse 87, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining and mentioning an attribute of Allah, the attribute being the truthfulness of Allah. Allah and his messengers, all the messengers, all his prophets, as Allah mentions in Quran, Kana Nabiyan Siddiqa. The prophets and the messengers of Allah were what? They were the truthful and they were the trustworthy and honest. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was called as what? As-Sadiq, Al-Ameen, the truthful, the honest and the trustworthy. His beloved wife was Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa Raziyallahu Ta'ala Anha. And he loved the most, the closest and the nearest and the dearest of friends among the companions, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Allah says in Quran, Haza yawma yanfar sadiqeena sidqihum. That it will be announced on the day of judgment that this is the day. This is the day when all the truthful and honest will get reward of their truthfulness. Lying, falsehood has been labeled as Ummul Khabais by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning the mother of all sins, meaning the root cause of all evil deeds. And it surely and definitely is. Anybody who can tell a lie has that reassurance that after doing an evil deed or after doing something wrong, he will be able to tell a lie and will be able to get away with it. So telling lies is a back door. Telling lies is an escape door for all the evil doers and all the sinners. There was a person who came to Prophet Sallallahu and he said that I am in the habit of doing four evil deeds. He said that I am a habitual liar, I steal, I drink and I commit adultery. Now I want to improve myself and I want to eradicate all these evil things from my personality and I want to stop sinning but I want to leave them one at a time. Now advise me. I can't just like reform myself one fine day. I can't leave everything. So I want to go one at a time. So tell me, advise me, Prophet Sallallahu which one should I leave first of all? You know what? Had it been any one of us who'd been asked this, we would have either said that just leave up your drinking or just leave up your committing adultery. It is immoral. But then Prophet Sallallahu said that you should stop telling lies. Stop telling lies. And you know what actually happened was... He was going to steal something and he immediately thought that previously I used to tell a lie and I used to get away with it. Now, now if I am caught and if I am proved, I won't be able to tell a lie. And then my hands might be just cut off. And then similar thing happened when he was going to drink 
and similar thoughts came in his mind when he was going to uh, commit adultery and then after a few days he came over to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said oh messenger of allah you have given me such a golden tip you have given me such a beautiful advice that leaving telling lies stopping telling lies has got me rid of all those evil things so this is how bad it is and how all form of lying will open up the doors for such huge and such major sins and evil doings allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah hajj verse 13 allah has clearly announced fashtanibu ridsa min al-awsani wajtanibu qawla dhur you stay away you shun you abstain from the forbidden worship of idols and shun every word that is untrue so abstinence and shunning has been ordered in quran regarding drinking and alcohol and intoxicants and then gambling in surah maida verse 90 allah says inna mal khamru wal maisru wal ansabu wal ansab ridsum min amali shaytani fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun abstinence from all these four things has been ordered and then in this verse of surah hajj verse 13 of surah hajj allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering abstinence from worshiping of idols and similar word of abstinence for saying or telling lies did we realize we we realize the importance of quitting drinks and gambling and leaving worshiping idols none of us can in the wildest dream ever think of worshiping an idol but how conveniently how easily how thinking it to be how trivial and how minor people would it conveniently tell lies and try to get away with things prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith reported in bukhari he said should i not tell you about the three major sins three major sins were as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said al ishraq billah aqukum walidain and then the narrator says that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reclining and then he he sat up straight and then he said qawla zur qawla zur shahada azur continues repeating the whole thing over and over again so the three big sins were polytheism that is finding partners with allah and then disobeying mistreating being bad in manners with the parents and then telling lies telling lies and witnessing a false witness so this has been labeled as a major sin as for the words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no one will be a muslim that is his faith his belief will not be complete until he abandoned telling lies even while he is mocking so it is so very important to stop telling lies and to be honest and to be to be truthful in one's dealing in one's behavior and mannerism hazrat abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in bukhari and muslim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said observe truthfulness as a duty and always speak the truth for truthfulness puts you on the path of virtue and virtue leads you to heaven and when a person tells a truth as a rule and makes truthfulness a way of his life he will attain the place of the sincerity and faithfulness and with allah then his name will be written as those who are truthful and stay strictly away from falsehood for falsehood puts you on the path of immorality and this leads you to hell and when a man keeps on lying the sequel is that his name gets written in the list of the liars allahumma la tajalna minhum o allah may we be not one of them hazrat abdul rahman bin abi qurad radhiyallahu ta'ala who reports that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever sincerely wishes whoever sincerely wishes to love allah and his messenger or he he wishes what that allah and his messenger loved him 
should always speak the truth when he speaks and restore honesty when he is received in trust to whom it is due and be good and courteous to the neighbors so being truthful and being honest in dealings is what will what will raise the ranks to the beloved people of allah hazrat umar bin samit radhiyallahu ta'ala and who said in musnad ahmad he reports in musnad ahmad that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you promise six things to me you promise six things to me and i shall give you the guarantee of jannah the six things are what top of the line just imagine top of the line speak the truth when you speak fulfill a promise when you make one render back honestly when a trust is placed in your charge protect your private past from the forbidden acts shut your eyes to things to look at which is prohibited hold back your hands on occasions which you are commanded to hold back do not hurt or harm anyone unjustly or stretch the hand to seize a thing unlawfully so this is the self control for which prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been giving the guarantee of paradise and guarantee of paradise beyond that hazrat abu said qudri radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in the rimzi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the honest trader will be with the prophets the truthful and the martyrs in jannah this is stopping telling lies and being truthful in one's all forms of dealings of the life hazrat abu umama radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in musnad ahmad that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there is a place of any habit in the nature of the believer except falsehood and breach of faith so a believer once a person becomes a believer and has faith then he can have any anything in his habit other than being other than falsehood and a person who says the kalima who embraces islam who enters in islam and becomes a believer and then that person has four habits a hadith which is narrated in bukhari and muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ayatul munafiq ruba four are the points or four are the characteristics of a hypocrite if he has all the four he is a full hypocrite until nandis he leaves all the all these habits the four habits are the four traits are hadith says idha hadatha qadaba when he talks when he talks he tells a lie he tells a lie idha hadatha qadaba is a ahada ghadara is a khana is a is a tumana khana when he is given trust he is dishonest and he when make makes a promise he breaks it is a khasama fajara when he fights when there is some issue of disagreement then he fights he just erupts he misbehaves he abuses and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the words of a hadith in muslim added despite the fact that he is offering salah despite the fact that he is paying zakat and despite the fact that he is performing hajj so despite all these worships if the person entering islam has these four traits in his personality then he has the temperament and he is a hypocrite according to the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma tuhhir qalbi min an-nifaq wa amali min ar-riya'i wa lisani min al-qazab wa 'ayni min al-khayanah inna ka ta'lamu man khayanat al-ayni wa ma tuhfi as-sudur Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirmizi how how disliked lying is that prophet says him said that when a bondsman tells a lie the angel goes a mile away from him because of the awful filthy smell or the stench Hazrat Sufyan bin Usaid Hazrami radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in Abu Daud the prophet says him said the most serious form of betrayal of faith is that you tell a lie to a brother while he believes that you are truthful in what you say so just cheating a person by telling a, a lie and making the person say that you are being truthful is the worst form of betrayal of faith 
Hazrat Abu Zar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim that Prophet Sallallahu said that there will be three people on whom Allah will neither speak on the day of resurrection nor cast a graceful look or nor will be they be purified of their sins. These peoples are at loss and they will be hopeless. Who are they? Prophet Sallallahu told that these out of one of these was the person who did what? That while he was making business transactions, he used to make a false promise. He used to swear falsely to sell his things of a business transaction. He used to make false swearing. Similarly, Prophet Sallallahu has said there are words of uh, hadith reported Muslim Ahmad Rimzi and Abu Dawood that the husband Hakim radiallahu ta'ala who reports that Prophet Sallallahu said, Fie upon him who tells lie to make people laugh, who just tells lie to create a situation or to create a conversation and just lies to make people laugh. And Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim, it is enough falsehood in a man to go about circulating what he hears from others. So this is how disliked saying lies is. And there was a mother, there's an incident that Hazrat Abdullah bin Amir radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Abu Dawud that Prophet saw a woman and uh, she came, uh, Hazrat, uh, the, the companion says that uh, there was a lady with two daughters and uh, she came and she asked the daughters that come quickly, I'll give you something. And then uh, she uh, she had a date and then she gave it to the children also. And Prophet said, remember that if you had not given anything to the child after promising to do so, a lie would have been written down in your deeds. So promising to give something or promising to do something or promising to go somewhere and or swearing by the name of Allah and then not fulfilling it is also a form of lie. So liars are not only the people who tell lies when they're speaking, when they're talking, when they're mocking, when they're making fun or when they're making uh, any business deal or transaction. It is not just lying around. Number one, liar is a person who tells lie, but liar is also a person who who likes people who lie and who supports all forms of dishonesty and falsehood and helps all forms of falsehood. And then he goes against all forms of honesty and all forms of truthfulness. And he dislikes people who are trustworthy and truthful and he goes against them and similarly a person who is truthful is a person who likes all forms of truth and honesty and he supports all form of fair dealings and all forms of truthful people and then he opposes and he stands against all forms of falsehood all forms of unfair dealings and all forms of dishonest my um, uh, manners so this is in detail what a liar is and what an honest and a truthful person is allahumma ja'alna minhum allah make us one of your truthful and honest and reliable people then allah says verse 88 what is the matter with you that you are two groups concerning the hypocrites while allah has made them fall back into error and disbelief for what they earned do you wish to guide those? Do you wish to guide those whom Allah has sent astray? And he whom Allah sends astray, never will you find for him a way of guidance. Allahumma ihtina sirat al mustaqim. Allahumma ihtina sirat al mustaqim. Allahumma tuhir kalbi min al nifaki. O Allah, clear our souls and save our souls from any form of hypocrisy. Verse 89, they wish you would believe as they disbelieved. They wish you would disbelieve as they disbelieved. So you would 
be alike. So do not take from among them allies until they emigrate for the cause of Allah. But if they turn away, then seize them and kill them wherever you find them and take not from among them any ally or helper. So here for an Islamic state, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding us to uh, for the, the state for the exterior affairs or the foreign affairs. How are we supposed to relate with people outside the state and when we need to fight with them and when we need to do kital with them and when we need to seize them and kill them as a matter of policy like interior affairs or foreign affairs. Verse number 90. Allah says, except for those who take refuge with people between yourself and whom is a treaty of those who come to you, their hearts strained at the prospect of fighting you or fighting their own people. And if Allah had willed, he could have given them power over you and they would have fought you. So if they remove themselves from you and do not fight you and offer you peace, then Allah has not made for you any cause for fighting against them. Verse 91 And you will find others who wish to obtain security from you and to obtain security from their people. Every time they are returned to the influence of disbelief, they fall back into it. So if they do not withdraw from you or offer you peace or restrain their hands, then seize them and kill them wherever you overtake them and those we have made for you against them a clear authorization. Verse 92 And never it is for a believer to kill a believer except by mistake. And whoever kills a believer by mistake, then what? Then freeing of a believing slave and compensation paid presented to the deceased family is required unless they give up their right as a charity. But if the second condition is the two options when a person has been killed by mistake is number one, freeing of a believing slave and second is paying of a compensation to the deceased family. The second option is, but if the deceased was from people at war with you and he was a believer, then only the freeing of a believing slave. And he was, third option, and if he was, that is the person who was killed, if he was from a people with whom you have a treaty, treaty of what? Treaty of peace, then a compensation payment presented to his family and the freeing of a believing slave. And whoever does not find, find what? A slave. Whoever does not find or cannot afford to buy one, then instead of freeing the slave, what will be he will be supposed to do? A fast of two months. How? Consecutively, continuously seeking acceptance of repentance from Allah and Allah is ever knowing and wise. In verse 93, the topic continues, but whoever kills a believer intentionally, his recompense is hell, wherein he will abide eternally. And Allah has become angry with him and has cursed him and has prepared from him a great punishment. So in these two verses, the verse number 92 and verse number 93, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about killing of a Muslim brother by a Muslim. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has forbidden this. In his farewell sermon, he said that the life, the honor and the property of a Muslim is forbidden for the Muslim brother. So to protect the life and honor and property of a Muslim is the due responsibility and duty of all the Muslim brothers. Killing of another Muslim brother is forbidden. It is a major sin and the punishment for it 
has been mentioned as hell. <coughs> now, killing or murdering anybody can be of two types. And I'll be talking about both the types and the punishments by law suggested by Quran. The first type of killing or murder is intentional killing. Intentional killing would be when the person who killed or the person who murdered did it intentionally, knowingly. The person had planned it and he knew that he was going to do it. So the first form is intentional killing. And the second form is unintentional killing or murder in which the person doesn't know but accidentally or <coughs> accidentally or unintentionally unwantingly it happened that the person got killed. Now the first type of killing that is the intentional planned killing the punishment for this form of killing has been mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 178, where Allah has said, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, kutiba alaykum ul-qisasu fil qatla, al-hurru bil-hurri wal-abdu bil-abdi wal-unza bil-unza, faman ufiya lahu min akhihi shayin, fattiba'un bil-maruf, wa adaa'un ilayhi bi-ihsan. O believers, Kisas. O oh, believers, kisas, that is the just retribution, has been made obligatory regarding the cases of killing. Free for the free, the slave for the slave, and the woman for a woman. And if something is remitted to a guilty brother, then remission shall be adhered to with fairness and the restitution shall be made in good manner. This is an alleviation from your sustainer and an act of his grace. And for him who willfully transgresses the bounds of what is right, there is grievous suffering in store. So, in this verse of verse 178 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has suggested to, suggested the law for punishment of intentional killing. Remember, there are four laws suggested by Quran. These laws are the punishments which have been uh, which have been ordered by Allah in Quran and there is no option other than these laws to be implemented in an Islamic state. Like for killing, it is the law of Kisas we, uh, we have mentioned here. For adultery, we will be studying in Surah Nur. And then for theft, there is the law of cutting the hands, that is the law of Sarka. And then there will be the law of as of, we shall be talking about these in Surah Nur in detail. <coughs> so these are the laws which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered and they are obligatory to be implemented in an Islamic state. So here for the intentional killing, two options are being given. Number one is the just retribution uh, or the kasas. It means blood for blood or life for life actually means what that the person who murdered the murderer will be killed and according to the normal international laws the murderer is uh, killed like by hanging or by putting in an electric chair or being electrocuted or sometimes being shot in the head etc but according to the law of islam law of kisas or law of just retribution how is it the murderer is supposed to be killed in exactly the same manner and exactly the same way that that he actually killed. Remember one thing, punishments in Islam, number one, are very severe and intense. Number two, they are immediately conducted and proceeded with. And thirdly, they are, they are publicly prosecuted. 
all the punishments are conducted and they are carried on publicly for the mere reason to make it as a uh, moralistic for the society the killing of the person of the murderer in kasas caning cutting of hands all these punishments are conducted or persecuted publicly because when the society and the people around will be observing all that will be a witness to the punishment this will teach the society a lesson and the person who will be a witness to this punishment will definitely be so terrified of the punishment that they will be avoiding all those evil deeds in future and in fact all these punishments like the laws of punishment which have been mentioned in quran are so intense and so severe and then carried on publicly that this is one of the points which has been raised against the um, the non muslims or the non believers and as a point of criticism against the teachings and against the laws of quran just to defame the teachings of quran they normally say it is normally said regarding these laws of islam that muslims are inhuman they kill the murderers by torturing them by torturing them they don't kill the murderers in a straight forward way of just hanging them or electrocuting them no they torture their murderers and all of the people in the society they sit and they witness the whole process these muslims they are sadists they are oppressors they are persecutors they are tyrants and finally they are terrorists it is not so this is the punishment which has been which has been ordered and made obligatory by allah because as allah says surah bakra verse 179 allah says walakum fil qasasi hayatun ya ulil albab and this part of the verse actually is how we need to refute all those criticizing and trying to defame the laws of quran allah says here i repeat walakum fil qasasi hayatun ya ulil albab and for in the law of just retribution there is life for you o you who have been endowed with insight if you have insight if you have wisdom and if you you can comprehend you would realize that these laws being so strict and so very severe and intense and harsh the purpose is saving human life you know what a statistics was carried out and a research was carried out and the number of deaths because of murder in 1 million deaths in different states was recorded and when the statistics were just came out they were so shocking for the non muslim states that for every million deaths in us there were 85000 deaths because of murder in england 75000 in france almost 56000 in germany 48000 or 42000 and in saudi arabia islamic state of saudi arabia where the law of this qasas is implemented on the soil there was just 25 deaths out of a million which were because of murder so it is the safety and the security of the human life which is which is being secured like this Now in the same verse verse 178 of surah al-baqarah the second option for intentional murder which has been mentioned as is what it is an option of remittance it is an options of remittance and his restitution will be paid and the remittance is of the punishment of the murderer by the relatives of the person who was killed and in return the murderer when his life will now be safe the murderer will be uh, will hence have to make a restitution and this will have to be paid and this will be in the form of the ransom or the blood money as quran calls as the dia 
any form of money which has to be given this order of the blood money was not it was not permissible it was no option given to the followers of the previous prophets it is just an option given to the followers of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is why prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been reported to say that i have brought an easy and a convenient religion now i would want to briefly explain why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than other than just murdering the killing the murderer has given this option of blood money is number one because there are times there are going to be occasions when the relatives of the murderer may just want to forgive they must they might just develop a soft corner for the murderer and they just might want to forgive so an option for remission has been opened the second type of condition is that there might be a situation or the scenario might be that the person who was killed and the person who is killing that it is mur- murdered person and the murderer both are of the same family like a brother killing a brother the son killing a father the son killing his mother so under this situation the family of the murdered or the killed person would obviously not want the murderer to be killed or hanged or whatever and the third reason is the economic reason or the economic constraints you know the person who was killed might have been a bread earner for the family he might have been a bread earner for the family and after his death there would be a huge economic constraints for the family left behind so under these situations rather than killing the murderer and taking revenge from the murderer instead of that taking the blood money might be a better option because this might turn out to be a great monetary or economic support for the widowed and for the orphan so islam is a very practical religion and remember that blood money which has been mentioned here there has been a blood money for the intentional killing this has not been fixed either in quran or in hadith the blood money for the intentional murder has been just left to the decision and the discretion of the judge of the court of the law of the time or the land and the judge of the court will decide according to the conditions prevailing and according to the requirements of the the family left behind or according to the conditions of killing or the conditions of the status of the murderer now the second form of killing is unintentional killing for which the law is been given here in verse number 92 and allah is talking about the same in the verse number 93 So this is an unintentional killing that was not planned it is not done it is not done with planning and with intention like if i give you a few examples there is a physician and the person a person or a patient goes to the physician and the physician carelessly not thinking about the drug interactions or doesn't take a proper history or whatever any form of carelessness or another lack of knowledge or lack of experience of the physician he prescribes a drug taking which the person expires or passes away the physician didn't intend killing the person but it was his lack of knowledge it was the lack of experience or it was his mere carelessness because of which the person expired a surgeon a surgeon performing surgery was either not very vigilant or he was not very well versed with the technique he might leave a bleeder or carelessly he might have left an instrument or a gauze pack in the abdomen or wherever it is and because of the neglect and because of the carelessness or because of not being that professionally surgically competent because of any or one of these the person dies the surgeon didn't intend killing the person but this was an unintentional killing of the patient 
a driver a driver is driving but over speeding he just overruns a person then a civil engineer a, a contractor for the construction constructs a building but the building is not strong enough and the and the roof collapses or the wall collapses and people are killed underneath these are a few examples of unintentional killing under these situations now in these two in this verse 92 of surah an-nisa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning two things a kafara that is the release of a muslim slave freeing of a muslim slave and the different conditions three conditions which i highlighted while i was reading the translation uh, have been mentioned here and if the person can't find like under the um, uh, like the conditions of today when slavery has been abolished and we can't find a slave or when the person in that period who could not afford a slave buying and freeing a slave then two months of consecutive fasts and the second thing the second punishment is compensation payment that is the blood money now the blood money or the compensation payment for the unintentionally conducted murder or the unintentional killing has been fixed and has been told by the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as 100 camels 200 cows or 2000 goats or the price of any one of these and this is such a colossal amount the reason being only to maintain or to teach the sanctity of human life and the human blood the careless attitudes of the doctors of the sir of the surgeons of the drivers will all be put to an end will all be put to an end if just one of the consultants will go through this punishment of dia and of kafara the whole carelessness is in the society will come to an end verse 94 ya yuhallazina amanu iza zarabtum fi sabilillah o you who have believed when you go forth to fight in the cause of allah investigate and do not say to one who gives you a greeting of peace you are not a believer aspiring for the go- for the goods of worldly life and for with allah a many acquisitions you yourselves were like that before then allah conferred his favor upon you so investigate indeed allah is ever with what you do acquainted so now here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the battlefield advising the muslims to investigate before uh, before having an opinion that the person they are attacking or the person they are fighting or the person they're going to kill in the battlefield is a muslim or a non believer and uh, then allah also says that uh, you should not uh, develop an opinion just by yourself and then you need to investigate so we not need not be uh, very curious about the other person's faith in our normal life and then we need not be very judgmental about anybody's religion and belief and faith also this is a, a condemned uh, a manner verse number 99 allah says la yastawi alqaiduna min almu'minina ghayru ulil zarar wal mujahiduna fi sabilillah bi amwalihim wa anfusihim faddallallahu almujahidina bi amwalihim wa anfusihim ala alqaidina daraja wa qullan wa'dallahu alhusna faddallallahu almujahidina ala alqaidina ajran azima not equal are those believers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a comparison between two groups of people and then is mentioning the greater ranks and the greater reward of one of the two groups now what is this not equal not equal are those believers who stay behind remaining at home other than the disabled and the mujahideen 
who strive and fight in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lives. Allah has preferred the Mujahideen through their wealth and their lives over those who remain behind by degrees. And to both, Allah has promised the best reward. But Allah has preferred the Mujahideen over those who remain behind with a greater reward. And what is this greater reward? Verse 96, Darajatim minhu wa maghfiratun wa rahmatan wa kaan Allahu ghafoora rahima. Degrees of high position from him and forgiveness and mercy and Allah is ever forgiving and merciful. So Allah, the forgiving and merciful, is here mentioning the higher rates, the higher position, the higher ranks, the higher grades, and the greater reward and forgiveness to all the Mujahideen as compared to those who do not go for jihad and stay behind. Now this verse, <coughs> this verse Number 95, we will be seeing two aspects in this. The first thing is that the verse is explaining the merits and the excellence of jihad and of mujahideen. First of all, I would want all of us to revise or to understand what actually jihad means. Jihad comes from the word jim ha dal. And this means in Arabic to struggle, to strive, to work hard, to endure for any cause. But jihad fi sabi lillah is what is being talked about here and in Quran. Jihad fi sabi lillah is to struggle, to strive, to work hard or to endure in the cause of Allah. In the path of Allah, and this is the jihad which is being talked about here and or and wherever in the Quran. There are different levels at which a believer can do jihad. The different levels being the first level being with our own soul. A believer does jihad with his own or her own soul, our own souls, the nafsi amara which teaches the person evil, evil deeds, which tends towards a sinful life or sinful activities. So trying to control our desires, trying to control our desires, submitting and surrendering to the obedience of Allah is all the effort which we do to this. To this effect is the first level of jihad. The second is with our family, with our spouse, with our children, if they are ordering or they are wanting or desiring us to do something against the orders of Allah or the Prophet wasallam, then the jihad, the struggle against them is the second level of jihad. Then the third level of jihad for a Muslim or for a believer is with the society, with the community, the sinful norms, the forbidden customs, the traditions of the society or of their community or of their tribe or of their clan which which are opposing or which clash with the teachings of Quran and Hadith and Sunnah. So there is the third level of jihad. Now the fourth level would be jihad with the state when the laws, the rules, the regulations are contradictory or opposing the laws, the rules and regulations of Quran and of Allah. Or when the rulers are making laws and making rules and regulations which are opposing the rules and regulations of Quran and Sunnah, then this would be the fourth level of jihad. And then at a global level, at the international level, at the level of the ummah. So these will be the four levels a believer will be doing jihad fi sabilillah. Then there are different types and different forms a person can be doing jihad. Different ways, different manners, different forms that a person can be doing jihad. The first being kital fi sabilillah is what? Fighting in the way of Allah. This is jihad bisayf, fighting with the sword, 
actually actually going to the battlefield and actually fighting the non-muslims or the anti-muslim powers in the actual battlefield is jihad bi saif this is the jihad with the sword or with any means of army strength or ammunition whatever it is there is no doubt that this is the most excellent in merit and this is the most excellent and is going to be rewarded with the greatest reward there's no doubt about it but then what i would need to clarify is that there are groups who claim and who think that this is the only form of jihad that just actually fighting the muslim enemies in the battlefield yaqtuluna fighting with them is the only form of jihad i again repeat there is no doubt that this is one of the most excellent forms of jihad regarding its merits but no doubt this is not the only form of jihad there are other forms of jihad there is much more to jihad other forms are what jihad bil qalam jihad bil qalam is jihad with the pen writing writing for the cause of allah writing for the sake of islam the third form is jihad bil lisan lisan is the tongue speech by the word of mouth so jihad bil qalam and jihad bil lisan can be for what writing or speaking or talking by the word of mouth or by the words of the pen for teaching of quran and hadith for the preaching and spreading of the message of allah and quran for the protection of islam and last but not the least for the implementation of islam for the implementation of the teachings of quran and the laws of quran making the message and the teachings of quran as our lifestyle as the system of government as a system of law as the legal system as the economic system as a social economic cultural system all that is being written and all that is spoken for all this will also be jihad bil qalam and jihad bil lisan as allah says as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say the most excellent jihad is of a person who speaks against the tyranny of a tyrant ruler a ruler a statesman a head of state who is doing activities or who is making laws and orders against or contrary or clashing to the laws of islam writing against that person or talking against that person or delivering speech or sermons against that person or coming up standing up against that person is what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says it is an excellent jihad and then all the preaching and all the spreading and all the teaching of quran allah says himself in quran jahid hum bihi jihad an kabira you do jihad with the non muslims with the non believers bihi with this this means what he is the pronoun here he is the pronoun here for the quran that do jihad with the quran according to the mannerism taught by the quran according to the limitations taught by quran according to the rules and regulations taught by quran for jihad and moreover take quran as a source of jihad the teaching of quran the spreading of quran the preaching of quran the implementation of quran that is the order of quran and allah calls it what jihad an kabira the biggest form of jihad the greatest form of jihad the most the most highest merit of jihad and the most excellent form of jihad is jihad and kabira is with quran and the fourth form of jihad is jihad bil mal to spend money to spend money again for the teaching for the preaching for the spreading of the verses of quran and sunnah or for helping those who are fighting for the cause of allah spreading spending to help the mujahideen or to help the organizations performing or arranging for jihad of ummah so all this money which is spent for to help the scholars of islam to help the teachers of islam 
to help the preachers of Islam, to help the mujahideen of Islam. All this money spent will also be in a category or in a form of jihad bin mal. And what is the importance of jihad? I will now be narrating a few words of the Prophet ﷺ to make us understand how important it is for us to play a role in any form of jihad, either by the word of our mouth, by our pen, by our, our money, or by our life, in any form. For Prophet ﷺ said that if a person, if a person stayed alive and throughout his life, Neither did he do any form of jihad, nor did he develop any desire to do any form of jihad in the path of Allah. Then on the day of judgment, he will be presented in the court of Allah like a hypocrite. So it is hypocrisy. It is decided hypocrisy to embrace Islam and to believe and have faith in Allah, his messengers in the book and then to intentionally stay away from jihad or to avoid jihad in any form. This is hypocrisy as labeled by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma tuhir kalbi min nifaki The excellence of jihad, Hazrat Abu Zar Ghaffari radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, having belief in Allah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, he was asked, ayyul amalu afzal? Which of the acts is the best act? Which out of the deeds or the acts is the best acts? Prophet ﷺ said, Iman billah wa jihadun fi sabilihi. Having believed in Allah and after that, jihad in the path of Allah. Allah, the Almighty, which you announce and you declare and you claim to have believed in, the second good deed and the second best deed will be then to do jihad in the way of the Allah you announced to believe in. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Tirimzi that Prophet sallallahu was asked that which acts are the most excellent or which acts are the best. He said what? He said having belief in Allah and his Prophet and then he was asked what next? He said, Al-Jihadu Sanamul Amal. Jihad is the hump. It is the peak. It is the climax. Jihad, which is the hump of all acts. And when he was asked what next? He said, Hajj Mabrur. That is a Hajj which is granted to be, granted to be accepted. It is, it will be accepted. Similarly, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that Prophet sallallahu was asked, Ayyul amalu ahabbu ilallah? Which, which of the deeds or acts of the bondsmen are those which are the most beloved in the sight, in the sight of Allah? Prophet sallallahu said, As-salatu ala waqtiha birrum bil walidain al-jihadu fi sabilillah. Offering salah at its proper time and being nice and kind and merciful and obedient to the parents and doing jihad in the path of Allah. Hazrat Abu Sayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim the Prophet said there is an act which will cause the exaltation of one one's grades to 100 times above paradise. And the distance between one grade and the other is equal to that of the earth and the skies. So Prophet ﷺ is telling about an act which will raise the ranks and the grade of a person in Jannah by hundred times. Companions asked, what is that act? Prophet ﷺ said, jihad in the way of Allah, jihad in the way of Allah. So this is the merit and the excellence of jihad fi sabidillah. As a Tubada bin Samit Rosyallahu Ta'ala and who reports in Musnid, Musnid Ahmad the Prophet said, fight in the path of Allah. Because indeed fighting in the path of Allah is what? Is one of the gates of paradise. And by it, Allah absolves one of sorrows and griefs.
So there is a gate in Jannah which is known as Babul Jihad. Only the Mujahideen, only those who are going to jihad, do jihad in the path of Allah will be allowed and will be asked to enter to that gate of Jannah, that Babul Jihad. Hazrat Fuzala bin Ubaid radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Nasai that Prophet sallallahu promised he said, I am the leader and I give the guarantee for one who believes in me and migrates. A person who believes and then migrates. I, I promise and I guarantee what? A house outside the Jannah, a house in the middle of Jannah and a house in the upper story of Jannah. And I give guarantee for one who believes in me and migrates <coughs> who believes in me and who migrates and who fights in the path of Allah a house outside Jannah a house in the middle of Jannah and a house in the upper part of Jannah and in other words Prophet said a palace in the highest rank of Jannah because one who does all these three acts three acts being believing and then migrating and then doing jihad. One who does all these three acts, does noble deeds and is completely safe from all evils. Such a person should die whenever he may. His reward will never be decreased. Hazrat Abu Huraira reports in Bukhari that a person came to Prophet Sallallahu and asked, he said, please tell me such an act for which the reward is equal to that of jihad. Any act, any deal, deed of the bondsman which would be rewarded the similar as jihad would be. Prophet Sallallahu said, there is no such act. There is no such act. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Mu'az bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Tirmzi that he said, Paradise or Jannah becomes due for a man who fights in the path of Allah even for a period equal to that of milking a she-camel. Such a brief period, one fights in the path of Allah and Jannah will become due for them, guaranteed for them. Hazrat Anas reports in Muslim that Prophet said, to march for jihad in the path of Allah for one morning or for one night is better than what is in the world and whatever the world contains. Marching for jihad one morning or one night is better than what is in the world. And whatever it is in the world, whatever it is in it. This will, the person who is marching in the path of Allah will remain safe from fire. Hazrat Abdul Rahman reports in Bukhari that Prophet said, fire of hell has been forbidden. Fire of hell will not touch. It has been forbidden on the feet of one who gets covered with dust in the way of Allah. And then what would be the rank and what would be the reward of a mujahid would be? Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports that Prophet said, staying for a moment in the way of Allah just for a few minutes and the path of Allah is better than standing in Salah near hajr aswad at the night of destiny. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min qayamil laylatul qadri in the hajr al-aswad standing near the black stone at the night of Laylatul Qadr the whole night staying in a state of Salah. What is better? One moment of jihad. So this is the excellence of jihad. And then Hazrat Abu Musa Ashri radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim, the Prophet said, the gates of paradise are under the shades of swords. Swords of whom? Swords of the Mujahideen. What is the excellence of Mujahideen? Hazrat Abu Tayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala who reports that a man said, he asked, who is the most excellent of all peoples? Who is the most excellent of all peoples? Prophet said, a believer who performs jihad in the path of Allah with his life and with his property. So there you are. Verse number 95, Allah says, 
So jihad can be with their with their bodies, with their souls, and with their money and wealth. So jihad is not just fighting. It can be spending anything, time, money, wealth, riches, anything in the path of Allah. And how how is the excellence of a mujahid? Hazrat Abu Huraira reports in Nisai that the example of fighter in the way of Allah is like the one who keeps fasts continually, who stands erect in adoration, always fears Allah, and continues bowing before Allah, that is Raku, and continues prostrating, that is Sajda. A person who is in continuous Raku, continuous Qayyam, continuous Sajda, continuously fasting and continuously in a state of fear of Allah. And then Allah has promised, Allah has taken the responsibility to help and to protect a mujahid. Hazrat Abu Huraira reports in Tirmizi that Prophet said that Allah is responsible for the help of three people. Number one, a mujahid, a fighter in the path of Allah. Number two, a slave who pledges a bond to play his prize to his master for his freedom. Nakatibat. And the third is one who just gets married to be safe from sins, from immorality or committing adultery. He just gets married. So the person, Allah will take charge. He will be, he will be helping him, looking after him and supporting him. Similarly, one who fights, as Ibn Umar who reports in Ibn Majah, the Prophet said, one who fights in the way of Allah, one who is like or one who performs hajj. One who fights in the way of Allah, who performs Hajj or who performs Umrah. All these are the guests of Allah. Allah summoned them and they attended to his call. So when they will pray to Allah, their prayer will be granted acceptance. The supplications of Mujahideen will be accepted is the promise of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's not just about the Mujahideen. People who are going to help them have always have always tried to support them. They ha also have an excellence. Hazrat Abdullah bin Amr ta'ala who reports in Abu Dawud, the Prophet said, for a person who goes to take part in jihad, there is one reward. And for a person who sends one to jihad by helping him with funds, there is double reward. One for the funds and one equal to that of the Mujahid himself. So the person who is going to spend money or who is going to monetarily or economically in any way support the mujahid is going to get double reward. Similarly, as Zayn bin Khalid Juhaini who reports in Muslim, the Prophet said, one of the two men should go for jihad and the other should stay behind to look after the house. Both will get equal reward. So the helpers, the supporters, those who spent for the Mujahideen have been promised equal reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand the merits of jihad, the excellence of Mujahideen and make us one of those who do jihad in any form or other and accept all these deeds from us and may these deeds be a source of player, may be these deeds be a source from release of hell and may these deeds be a source of entering for all of us in, in the Jannah. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana ba'da is hadaytana wa hablana millatunka rahma innaka antal wahab subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun Wa Salamun Ala Al Mursaleen Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ameen Summa Ameen